Hello. Good morning, LHOM. Welcome. Here you, here you. We're here for another great meeting. Uh, we're going to start off by asking if there are any new people here today. A couple, that's great. We love new people. We love old people too, and young people. Um, but welcome, uh, LHUM. We each week we join here at Connors. We talk about things relative to uh, uh, being better at marketing and selling and being better business people. So we're glad you're all here. Uh, we are a nonprofit organization, so in that spirit, we pass around our hat, which is actually a jar. Stacy will, our treasurer, will um, start that uh, moving. And if you don't mind uh, donating, it would be great. It's not required, but three dollar donation is sort of where we um, uh, feel uh, we should go. But so that will come around. Okay, this format, as usual, we're going to have someone speak. I'll introduce them in a second, you'll know them anyway. Uh, and then after that, you'll talk about a half an hour, we'll have question and answer period. And then we'll go around the room and there are a lot of people here today, so we'll have to go kind of quickly. Uh, everyone gets a chance to stand up and tell who they are and what they do and uh, introduce yourself to a great group of people here. So, any questions? Okay, the sponsor uh, th this week is um, Women Making Connections. And uh, to that end, we're going to get a couple words from uh, Scott Ringline, who's working with Tammy uh, in Women Making Convention. So, Scott, here. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for coming. Uh, just quickly, show of hands, how many people either have a Blackberry or a smartphone? <laughs> wow. Well, guess what? You're not alone. There's 150 million in the United States, and Google says that Marketing through mobile phones will dwarf everything else out there. If you're interested in joining that revolution, stop and see me after we're done. Um, thanks for coming, and uh, look forward to listening to the chat. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Tammy, for being a sponsor. It's really helpful, everyone. It's a pretty good deal. Uh, so if you talk to anyone of our team, with Tammy or um, uh, Amanda, uh, we'll help you with that. Okay, today we're going to hear uh, from uh, Chad uh, Wiebesek, who everyone here probably knows, past president of the uh, Ann Arbor Ad Club, uh, currently the social media and interactive marketing director at PWB Marketing Communications, and who better to talk to us about the value of social media in a B2B environment. Um, obviously, Chad is well-versed in this. He's been in the business for over 10 years. Uh, some of his uh, highlights include, uh, again, being president of the Ad Club, uh, online media and marketing magazines, America's top 20 interactive media rising star, which he certainly is, uh, and the national finalist in media magazines, creative media awards competition. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, Chad Wiebesek is going to talk to us about social media in its value in B2B environments. Thanks. All yours. Man. Stuff that you know, facts like 
nearly 80% of all people are at least a fan of one business Facebook. That's great. That's easy to believe. I get it. But the question, the problem is, I get it for consumers, but how is that relevant to businesses, right? So I'm here today to dispel the myth that social media is not relevant or not applicable to a large extent or a small extent to business to business. Social media, and there's you know 
really kind of four big challenges that that we see. Uh, the first is uh, oftentimes a client will come to us and say, I want to use Facebook. You know, Facebook is my strategy. I want or I, you know, I want to use LinkedIn, you know, to reach my audience, right? My customers. LinkedIn or Facebook is not a strategy. They're a tool, right? To take a step back, understand what your business objective is. If it's generating leads or wanting to get white papers or downloads, downloads registration, develop a social media strategy around that to drive traffic to those key areas on your website and encourage people to take that next step. So understand your business objective and tie that back to your social media strategy. Second biggest mistake that I see that big companies make and social media managers make is they stay awake at night. They lose sleep over the fact that they don't know what to say. They want to get more followers, they want to get more fans, they want to get more likes. They want people to pass along their blog posts or tweet about them. They, they want more interaction, more engagement. That's nice, but how does that correlate to dollars and cents? If it doesn't make dollars, it don't make sense. Media, marketing is about making money. Social media should make you money. If it's not making you money, then what's the point of, of doing it? At the end of the day, what's the point of doing marketing if it's not making you money? So have a content marketing strategy. Understand what your audience is, what your customers' problems are, and develop various content to deliver solutions to their problems, right? Build a relationship with them uh, through content. 60% of all tweets in the Twitter sphere is shared content, that's published content, right? So by, by publishing a blog, by having content, it's giving you giving you food to feed a social media monster. Have, having a content strategy will give you something to say, it'll make what you say relevant, and it'll increase engagement. Third biggest problem is, is there's a lack of integration, right? And uh, what, what we don't see enough of is social media integrating with traditional media. For instance, this is pretty simple. Take a QR code, put it on your billboard, Right? Uh, not so that when people are driving a car, they can snap the billboard, but as pedestrians are walking along the street, snap the QR code and have the QR code point to the YouTube video page. Right? To learn more information. It's pretty simple. We don't see it happen enough. Another thing you can do is, um, you know, uh, if you're running a Facebook fan promotion, right? Mention that in your radio spots. Pretty simple. It's not done enough. Oh, and by the way, for the record, integration means not only integrating the social media into your traditional marketing, but integrating your social media into the rest of your business, such as customer service and product development. And we'll see some ways that uh, that these four companies are doing all these four things here. Uh, last but not least, uh, measure what matters and improve upon it, and that goes back to. Uh, you know, the, the philosophy that um, you know, if, if you are not, if you're not measuring, you're not managing. You can't, you, know, you can't measure, manage what you're not measuring. Right? So there's a lot of different ways to measure social media, likes, friends, uh, buddies, colleagues, handshakes, high fives. Right? That's all soft and fuzzy. It feels good, but it's a gut feel if it's working or not. What you really need to do is implement some advanced analytics to track it all the way through to see if this, your social media app is making any money. Any, any questions? We're pretty, we're pretty casual here at LA2 so if there's any questions that come up, uh, feel free to raise your hand or save them at the Q&A at the end. India, anybody from the Indian Corporation? I, I didn't until I started doing some research. These guys are global solder supplier to electronics, as B2B as B2B can get. Uh, their business objective, they wanted to be seen as a, as a thought leader, they wanted to use social media to drive sales. What was phenomenal about these guys was they had a, a, an awesome content strategy in place, and they used the blogging. They get more leads from their blogging efforts than nearly any other uh, effort that they're doing. Let's take a look at their blog. 
14 different engineers that are blogging on behalf of the company. Right, right there, that's pretty phenomenal. Now, for, for the folks in the room that are, that are blogging, how, how many have more than one person blogging? Okay, a, a limited number of people. They got four, like 14 engineers, and the way that they were able to sell this through was because they asked their engineers not to blog like a marketer, but to blog like themselves, to blog like an engineer. Their blog is an engineer for engineers. Take a look at what they're doing, okay? Their blog is current, May 19th, May 18th, goes back, you know, so they're, they're blogging on a weekly basis, that's good. There's research that says business to business companies or, or marketers in general, companies that blog more get more leads than companies that don't. And the more you blog, the more leads you get. You blog once a month, right, that, I often get asked, you blog once a month or twice a month, or what's that magic number? It, it really depends, I think consistency is key. So if your customers come to expect that once a month is kind of you know, how you do it, that's fine, right? But if you blog daily, if you, if you blog daily, if not two or three times a day, right? The more you blog, the more leads, the more leads you can get. So you know, I like engineers because they're, they're blogging frequently. They got 14 disparate engineers to blog on their behalf. Uh, they're they have social media embedded throughout their blog with Facebook and Twitter. Uh, they could be doing more integrated social media with their blog. For instance, they have a leave a comment like all blogs do, but what they don't have, they don't have this connected to a Facebook Connect, right? So that if you're if you're a Facebook fan, you can come in here and leave a comment without having to go through the big rigmarole of a proprietary. Uh, login uh, type of thing. So I give these guys kudos. <laughs> Think about what content does your company have that you can repurpose into other forms of content. For instance, for the companies here that are doing trade shows, right? You can blog about your anticipation of going to the trade show. While at the trade show, you can blog at the trade show. You can also tweet at the trade show. After the trade show, you can write a blog post about your experience at the trade show and who you met, right? You can repurpose uh, and reimagine uh, white papers can become YouTube uh, videos, right? A white paper can become a series of eight different blog posts. Content is king. There is no shortage of content your company can write about because you guys are such better experts in the field. Canaxis, anybody heard of these guys? Supply chain management company. They wanted traffic and leads. Pretty basic. These guys were slick. What I liked about them was they used humor in a very neat way to uh, interact with their customers. They created a series of YouTube videos starring Kevin Pollock. Uh, he's a big kind of Hollywood type of actor, and the sales team used these videos as kind of a way to get their foot in the door. So these were viral videos, and, and you know, what, what is viral? That's a frustrating question to answer, right? At PWP, we get asked that a lot. What is, what is viral? There's no magic formula. Uh, well, viral, uh, oftentimes we hear answers like, you know, what is viral? It's a video that's good. They may use other words than that, but it's a viral that's good. Well, the problem with that is, I know a lot of bad ideas that get viral and a lot of good ideas that don't get viral. Um, you know, marketers, we try to be funny. We're not funny all the time. Saturday Night Live, they try to be funny weekly, right? They, they miss the mark, right? So, the, so what's viral? So they, these guys, they, they have a viral video. Let's take a look at it. Here's what, Kevin Pollan. What do they, what do they, what do they follow? Uh, their product, uh, so they're a supply chain management company. They service the aerospace, industrial, and life sciences market. So they're. What do they sell? What do they sell? That, technology, service solutions, you know. Uh, they're very industrial type of stuff. 
ditching the bandage and finding a match that works. Not sure what that is, but you know, kind of fun, kind of fun stuff. We have, uh, okay. So uh, let's take a look here. Ask yourself, how can you translate your brand, your company message, into ways that can uh, humanize your brand and ways that you can carry your offline brand into the online world. The food for thought can access to a good job. Archer Technology, they're, they're kind of in an insurance space. They're a risk and compliance solutions company. They wanted to generate awareness and interest. So they actually they did something that Anaxis did. They launched their own kind of social microsite. It's called Archer Community. Uh, we have about five minutes, uh, so we're not going to spend too much time on this particular uh, social network site. Um, what, how, how they use their network was as a product development type of solution. So they, they have, as of the last count, they have nearly 6,000 members. And these 6,000 members, they, they asked their uh, social network fans to uh, come up with ideas to innovate and make their products better. And nearly 2,000 ideas were generated from the 6,000 members. Uh, this was free product development. How can you increase engagement and participation? Think about your content network or your content strategy. Uh, finally, Cree, they're a manufacturer of LED lighting for businesses and organizations. What they did was uh, they used a strategy that a lot of pharmaceutical companies are using. Pharmaceuticals, they're uh, at the end of the day, for pharmaceutical companies, their clients are physicians. And what the pharmaceutical companies are doing is a whole through strategy. So all the TV commercials that we see on TV for Viagra, they're targeted not not to me, but you know to us, right? <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're targeted to us, not to physicians, right? So that the consumers drive the demand to the physicians, and the physicians ask. Pharmaceutical companies, right? So you guys get that? It's exactly what Creed did. They're a beauty company. They sell the manufacturers this new LED lighting because in 2012, the U.S. government is going to phase out uh, incandescent lighting they made for, and it's going to be some other technology. LED is buying for that. So what these guys did was they targeted consumers. They targeted consumers to generate demand to go ask manufacturers to start stocking. LED light bulbs. So, this is the microsite they created. They ran uh, really cool contests where they asked folks to take a photograph of their workspace and a workspace that had the back the worst lighting uh, won, you know, some, some awards. So I thought it was, you know, it was pretty clever. So uh, and the question here is, how will you align your marketing to your business goals? This microsite, by the way, I drove a, a lot of traffic to uh, to their corporate site, and uh, they they had some videos uh, that drove five thousand views. Here's. We have just a few minutes left. I, I hear some chuckle in the room, so most of us uh, may have heard this kind of little story already. Here's kind of one uh, bloober of what not to do. Uh, so uh, a social media manager, uh, you know, somebody was driving in their car here in town, was getting frustrated with all the traffic and getting backed up, so they tweeted this, right? Uh, the person that tweeted this worked for the advertising agency for Chrysler. <laughs> really, really unfortunate because not only did uh, this poor soul lose his job, but Chrysler fired the agency. Uh, right? Uh, so, <laughs> so what's the story to take away here? Is, uh, you know, yes, be, be careful. 
so you can't tell the truth. <laughs> and there's a number of takeaways here. You know, one, one takeaway is to make sure that you use uh, separate logins and passwords and have separate social media profiles for your personal activity and your business activity. This gentleman thought that he was tweeting to his personal account, not through his Chrysler business account. Yeah. Whoops. Okay, so, you know, that, that's about it. So let's review. Uh, you know, uh, integration is, is key. Integration does not mean making sure your Facebook is synced up to your Twitter, right? Uh, no, typically not because Facebook audiences are different than Twitter audiences. If you're on, if you're on Facebook, uh, your customers don't want to see these crazy looking hashtags. You want, what's a hashtag? You know, if you're on Facebook, you know, that belongs in the Twitter sphere. Integration means integrating with traditional marketing and with your business <coughs> departments. Facebook is not a strategy. Uh, you know, don't, don't do social media. If you're doing social media without a content strategy, stop. Okay, you've got to get a content strategy first. It'll give you something to talk about. Not only that, it'll be something to talk about that's important to your customers and something that they will want to share. They want to come back to you time and again because they're, you are a resource of information. Hopefully, they'll reward you with their loyalty and eventually your business because they trust you. Uh, three places to go for more information. If you want to learn more about B2B and social media, go to b2bonline.com marketingprofs.com or socialmediabb.com and also you can uh, if you're interested in this presentation you can whip out your smartphone scan the QR code and you can download the video or uh, the PowerPoint presentation and you can also read our blog as well we have more tips and advice so let's open it up to Q&A you know, we covered a lot of ground here yeah, let's hear it for chat I think the whole idea of integration is like such an important thing. You know, your examples are awesome to see what people, even in, our, even in industries that aren't typically sort of known for social media use, are doing like really smart and interesting things. So I love that. Thanks, Chad. Uh, we're gonna, we have a lot of people, so we're going to do a shorter question and answer thing, like maybe 10 minutes or so. So I'm going to start the microphone around. Uh, if anyone has any questions, raise your hand now, and when we're done with that, people are going to save it there. All right, you're start here. Um, all right, even our company, we always wonder how to utilize it because business to business. And we still, I, I must say, that after this lecture, we still don't know just the kind of uh, what, when you have a sophisticated product, I don't know, I, I won't talk about mine, but let's assume it's highly scientific, Raman spectroscopy. You have to figure out who is in the audience. And let's assume that you take this one. How do you go with the social media and say, I'm not in technology, okay? Who is the audience? Who will answer? Who will see the stuff? Who will understand? Okay, it's applies and everywhere. But the Twitter always puzzles me that people are saying, use this strategy, tweeting, when you have highly sophisticated product that you market to the place. Is there any way to do it? Yes. Uh, so, in your case, you have a very complex product, right? And it's, it's difficult, um, you know, it's, it's very kind of long, complex sales cycle, right? I find a lot of business, business marketers think, you know, Twitter and we're getting feedback. Back in there, okay. Um, I, I find that uh, many marketers think Facebook or Twitter is a strategy, right? Uh, if you have a complex product, perhaps a video, right, may be kind of a neat way to showcase the, uh, the product, bring it to life. Maybe you could do a customer <coughs> testimonial. Or maybe you could do uh, like a product brochure, but in video, right, and then post it on YouTube. YouTube is highly, highly indexed by Google. We can put a YouTube video up on Google and within a matter of hours, right, it gets picked up on Google. You'll rank on the first page. Right? Not, not always, you know, but that is it's one way to kind of help uh, show up on Google. So in terms of like, you know, if you have a complex product, what can you do with social media? You know, understand where your customer is at, right? If they're on LinkedIn or YouTube or Facebook, but, but also, you know, think about ways to use video to bring a complex product to life. 
Because we have a, uh, we're, we're passing around the mic for a question. Oh, sorry, Pat. Um, I was asked by my group today to ask about contests. Um, you mentioned that in the last example. Anybody have run a contest without dealing with legal? Uh, no, that, no, no, a lot of, uh, <laughs> and, you'll, and not only do you have to deal with legal, but you also, uh, technically you have to deal with uh, Facebook's legal department as well, because Facebook has policies and guidelines around promotions and contests. So, uh, you know, do your homework, you know, include not only your own legal department, but also take a look at Facebook's policy and guidelines to make sure you're abiding by the rules. Hi, my question is about uh, comments. You know, there's posting uh, videos and stuff, but then should you have a strategy about how to handle comments? Because if it gets a whole, um, you know, that could get neglected. For instance, if someone makes a negative comment or a, con a negative question, um, don't you have to be kind of continually monitoring that? Yeah, I, I see some companies that do it wrong because they close out conference for fear that's the bad news set. And, and, I, and I get that as a concern, but I think there's a greater good and a better benefit to the business by opening up the comments. Because if there is a disgruntled customer, they're going to have a bad mouth view one way or another, right? It's better for them to bad mouth view in a forum where you have a voice to voice back constructively and give uh, give yourself a chance to not only voice back but to have the other customer see how helpful you are and that you can reconcile these types of problems. And you don't yes you always have to yes you always have to monitor the comments but there are software and technology that can assist in that. Your time for one more. Thank you for all the questions. We have one more. Um, my company we actually are in some sense, both marketing customers and to the business. Um, so we, we interact with other businesses on Twitter quite a bit. We're trying to engage uh, customers more. I'm kind of curious to know, do you think of those two things, do we run the risk of, of clouding the message, with you guys having separate avenues that we, that we use for each? Um, or have you run into any special cases in that regard? Thank you for asking that question. So if there, uh, take, so take a step back. Right, uh, you have markets of both businesses and consumers. What overlap is there? Is, is there, you know, to what degree is there overlap? If there's overlap, um, then targeting to businesses, that information may also be relevant to a uh, consumer as well. You know, you know what I'm saying? They go both ways, right? So, for instance, if you have a blog, I don't know if you do, uh, if you have two separate blogs or one, you may want to have one and then uh, use tags and categories so that a consumer or a business can go to your blog and then just sort of give them the choice and control to kind of sort out if they want to make business information or consumer information. So take a look to see if there's overlap. Um, I was just uh, curious about the uh, Facebook and Get response. You know, I liked your article. I attended your seminar. But are there any kind of tools today? You know, obviously, you know, for coupons, for example, are much more for business consumer. But B two B strategies that focus on call to action. Okay. So going back to the example, business and businesses are not selling stuff that can be bought online, right? We're not selling a book or a DVD. DVD one click purchase. We got it in our shopping. No, it's a longer sales cycle. So um, start with the end in mind and back out from there. Look at what, what makes you money, right? What makes you, typically what makes you money are leads, right? So what, what is the purchase funnel to get a lead, right? Um, you know, so you'll want to have actionable things on your website for people to do that is a proxy indicator of interest or intent, right? So stuff such as sign up for our newsletter, 
or download our white paper or register for a webinar. Uh, those types of things are uh, you know, uh, pretty kind of, they're at the, kind of at the top of the funnel, right? Uh, and then make sure, you con make sure you gather their contact information, right? And have analytics in place so that you know who's downloading that information and how often they're going back to your site, right? And how much time they're spending. So if you know that they downloaded a white paper and they're repeatedly coming back and they're looking at some key pages, then that's kind of almost like a pre-qualifier for the sales team to follow up on. Because marketing's job is to kind of weed out the riffraff, right? And to you know, qualify leads. So if you have those actionable items on your website and you have Google Analytics in place and look at proxy metrics and intent, then you can kind of weed out uh, <coughs> the you know, cool leads to warm leads for your sales. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. you, 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 get, you get the names because when people sign up for a register, a white paper, or a download, or a newsletter, you're getting that time. It's like they watch it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you again, Chad. Hang on here. Yeah. And here's contact information. Obviously, a very smart guy. He knows a lot about this. You know, get a hold of him and uh, let him do his magic for you guys. So, all right. Thank you again. We're going to pass the mic around. Please take a little short time to explain who you are, describe what you do, and uh, pass the mic on. Thanks. So, Mark. Hi there. I'm Mark Olivier, and I do affiliate marketing. Hi, my name is Patrick Hogan. I work for NPR. We do flood prevention and restoration. I'm Ty Gagne with Isaac. Um, recently, Snoop Dogg stood on stage, said text Snoop to 90210, and he had about 3,000 people opt in. Now he can blast out a message every time he's having a concert and tell people where it's at. That's one. Through mobile phones. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is John Rose here. I've invented the the ultimate analog clock. It's called the Sky Clock. Michael Gackler, MJG Social Media. I create and maintain Facebook pages and clear timelines for businesses, medical offices, and school districts. Beth Heiss, I help a business from home send towels and manage their Facebook page, do their sales and marketing, and I also am a professor at Adrian College, teaching marketing. Kevin Lebrecht, I'm the director of sales and marketing for Biolumix. We sell a rapid automated microbial detection system. We detect bacteria. Then uh, nutraceutical products, pharmaceutical products, cosmetics, that type of thing. <coughs> Hi, I'm Liz Cezat. I'm a writer and marketing consultant. I have a company called Cezat Creative Resources. I do a lot of work with universities, healthcare systems, and more where else needs to Hi, I'm Beth Miller. I'm a marketing communications manager at Internet2, a research consortium headquartered here. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Colson. I'm uh, the uh, co-founder and uh, CEO over at uh, Switchback. Uh, we are a local firm that specializes in uh, uh, web application development and uh, kind of management systems. My name is Marty Bile. I'm with Switchback also, so uh, I do the same thing he does. Much better. Much better. Hi, my name is Bill Dandy. Until recently, I was uh, Chief Marketing Officer at Borders. Um, I have, yeah, it's a bookstore. He <laughs> seems to be saying to me the formally part of that is the best part. Um, just to share with you, I've, I've been in specialty retail for over 25 years. I've been in highly transformational kinds of opportunities, like I was a CMO at Dick's and so forth, Dick's Sporting Goods. Um, I am actually doing quite a bit of consulting right now, and I'm seriously considering going over to the service provider side of the equation. So as this meeting piqued my interest, and that's why I'm here. Jane, 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 Jane. 
Um, hi, Jane Delancey, Delancey Design. Uh, <clears throat> we do marketing for communications for small businesses and individuals. Delancey Design. I'm Patrick Dom. I'm a marketing student at EMU, and I'm also a sous chef at the Common Grill in Chelsea. All right. uh, Jeremy King, a recent MBA graduate from the U of M, looking for marketing career opportunities. Right. Lanny White, GrowBiz.org, and I'm looking for someone in this room or someone you know who is good at, um, for the street talker about um, uh, IT and all that, someone who is good at bridging uh, new IT programs with small business programs already in place. Does that make sense to you? Stop and see. <laughs> and if it doesn't, stop and see them also. <laughs> My name is Mark Reynolds, and uh, I'm with GrowBiz, and what I do is strategic mapping, which means the big ideas to break down into an operational plan. So if you want to see five years out, and then what do you do in the next 90 days, uh, we're the guys to see. Hi, everybody. I'm Stacy from Dollar Bell, the local digital print shop, and I'm the other side, the traditional marketing side that you have to use with all your social media. So that's what we do. Hi, I'm Matthew Heber. I'm a writer, producer, director. I uh, help with content creation, primarily video and film, but also uh, interactive and uh, My name is Bill Kirschbaum. I'm a technical writer who believes that everything a customer sees will influence their opinion of your company. So I work with small businesses to create exceptional materials and online content that will enchant your customers and strengthen your company's uh, authority. Thank you. I am Leslie Wilkins. I do marketing for a company that audits health care claims for bigger companies. It's called Health Decisions. I'm Mike Consiglio, a volunteer search marketer and student at EMU. I am Celia Nepp. I'm a student at EMU with uh, search marketing as well as him. Um, I work at the Diamondbacks Saloon. I do all of their web marketing, advertising, and sales. Hi, I'm uh, Adam Bergelo, and I am a marketing student at EMU, and I have a focus in uh, search marketing. Hi, my name is Chris Kubiak. I'm a finance student at uh, Eastern Michigan University. Hello, my name is Eddie Roberts. I work for a marketing firm based in Chicago, uh, Friend Associates. We are starting to expand our reach. In fact, we had a meeting with Chad just a, about a month ago. Bar Louie, I think it was. Anyway, we had a good time, and uh, what we're, our focus is uh, to expand business here in, in Ann Arbor and beyond. Uh, we're, the, the owner of the company is, is a woman, and she's uh, joined the Mish Again uh, program, and uh, we're, we're, we're trying to uh, promote the fact that she's a, a female business owner in, this, in the state, and so we're gonna try to expand all of our business here in Michigan. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tiffany Reisner. I work at Ingenix doing uh, digital marketing, social media, all that good stuff. I also help run LA2M along with Amanda over here who you'll meet soon. Um, uh, Chad was talking about blogs. We update our blog uh, at least twice a day. It's thedigitalbus.com. It's about marketing, all the kinds of things we talk about here. So check it out. I post occasionally with quite a few people. Um, so here's Megan. Hi guys, I'm Megan Crosby with the Charles Reinhardt Company. I'm going to be fast because I have two things. One, speaking of Bar Louie, why the underground meets night at 5 p.m. at Bar Louie. Two, the Charles Reinhardt Company is partnered with United Way to support the community baby shower. We're collecting various baby things at all of our offices, so I have more information if you're interested in the donation. Hello, my name is Lauren Schneider. I'm an intern at Ingenix. And I, <laughs> I do a lot of um, write, like web writing for uh, SEO, so I do like blog posts, and our blog for the internship is eco-friendly internship. Hi, I'm Amanda Butcher, and I am the Allied Swim intern. 
Hi, my name is Ed Farrell. I'm with Crowd Juice Corporation, and we're the event registration and attendee matchmaking tool for LA2M and other events around Southeast Michigan. Uh, we help you uh, make connections at events like this and not miss the perfect connection. And show of hands, how many of you registered using Crowd Juice today? Yeah. The rest of you, next time. <laughs> so you don't miss the perfect connection. We're Jim and Jackie Harkamon, and uh, we're with Go Small Biz and Prepaid Legal Services. We market a service for small business owners that understand uh, the importance of attorneys and consulting, but hate the high cost. Hi, I'm Joanne Bandoni. I'm a copywriter, crowd sector, and project manager. I have an agency background. I do traditional and digital. And I run a freelance company right now called Bandoni Creative, and I have used chat for some of my clients with social marketing, and it's excellent. And I totally believe in integration of digital and traditional marketing. Hi, my name is Marianne Coppola. I am uh, Riley Coppola's daughter. She typically attends these events. Um, I recently moved to Ann Arbor, so we need to establish my network here. But then also, um, I'm launching Social Signature, which is a personalized online shopping experience for ethical apparel. Hi, my name is Brett Morsel. I can do AdWords for small and medium companies. I have to went through the AdWords program at Eastern. Hi, I'm Kyle Sue. I'm the head of social strategy over at the Whole Brain Group. Uh, I look familiar. I just want to to Great talk, Chad. If, any, if anyone was scared or confused by what Chad was talking about today, um, please come talk to me. There's people out there who are in need of your product or your service or are, are, are talking about it, or they may not be talking about you at all, which is a whole separate problem. So um, if you want to uh, jump into that, please talk with me. Um, I'm more than willing to let you bend my ear for a while. Hi, I'm Shannon Janisek. I'm a copywriter in the marketing department at ProQuest. Uh, I'm Wayne Anker. I'm a web developer specializing in websites built with the Drupal content management system. And if you don't know what that is, then come back here next week where I'll be part of a panel discussion. Uh, we'll be discussing WordPress and Drupal content management systems, um, when you might use one or the other, um, e-commerce, social networking, and how you can do that on all the, both of the platforms. I'm John Beckett from Vendor Managed Technologies. We have an application for consumer goods companies to capture point of sale data from retailers and analyze it. So we do B2B to B2B to B2C. <laughs> Hi, I'm Robert Beckett. I'm a marketing student at Butler University, and I'm doing a SEO internship with Vendor Managed Technologies. I'm Katie Jones, the events manager of the A2Y Chamber, and um, I'm always looking for speakers for our events, so if you're interested, come see me. Hello everybody, I'm Carol Cam. I own Encore Online Resale. We do professional eBay consignment sales for individuals and businesses, and fundraising for nonprofits. Hi, I'm Shirley Kamishberg, part of the uh, Clay Gallery, a cooperative pottery place here on Main Street, and we're thinking of upgrading our website to get more information. <laughs> Hi, I'm Patrick Collins with Ypsilanti TechWorks. I do IT consulting as well as web hosting for sites that use Drupal and WordPress. Hello, my name is Gint Gaska. I'm a uh, lean startup. I've called myself uh, Hyperlocal Connections. Uh, I'm the founder of Buy Local Ann Arbor. I'm starting a citywide uh, loyalty campaign that promotes the Buy Local movement. Uh, I also have a really cool uh, uh, YouTube uh, example for uh, uh, Blendtec is a blender company. Oh, yeah. They started creating uh, YouTube videos uh, called Will It Blend? And uh, the, the sales have increased 700% since they started these uh, videos. And uh, actually they've got a secondary revenue stream where now companies are asking to blend their products. The last thing they blended was an iPad. It's real <laughs> Hi, I'm Nancy Shore, director of the Get Downtown program. And if you don't know us, if you work downtown, we are your downtown community consultant. That is what we do. We are on Facebook and Twitter and blogging. And we are doing the Commuter Challenge this month, which Touchback and the Bravery Group and other businesses are participating in. It is our big 
little marketing thing that we do, but we also provide assistance for anything from zip cars to bus passes downtown to walking, biking, anything you want related to green transportation. Thanks. Hi, I'm Nicole Packard, and I'm marketing coordinator at Hudson Black Architects. Hello, I'm Erin Kansfrell, the manager of Fitness Together West for private personal training, but we also offer group classes in the academy. We're on stadium to sell the polling. Uh, I'm Roger Rail. I uh, help churn ideas. Uh, my name's Tom Bobney. I, I own a small company called Mobile Woods and a Specialist. We do a lot of B2B marketing uh, for Fortune 500 companies. Uh, so usually I'm used to dealing with CMOs who make or break their career on, on the idea of taking a big, large semi and driving it to your customer's front door. Hi, I'm Laura Miller. I work at Newstep in Ann Arbor in the marketing I'm Jacob Smith of Go Green Energy Consulting. Uh, if you have high energy bills, uh, drafty home, hot or cold rooms, these types of things are often a problem of energy efficiency, uh, inefficiencies in the home. Uh, we identify the problems at the source and we fix them, basically. Uh, we also are looking for contractor partners. We partner with insulation companies, heating and cooling companies, home improvement contractors to help their customers qualify for awesome rebate programs that are available for homeowners right now. And Arbor too. Uh, my name is Dennis Blaine from Michigan Commerce Bank. I'm in the marketing department and mortgage department. Hi, I'm Mike Kessley. My company is Kessley Development, where we help develop employees. If you've ever hired somebody that didn't work out, I can probably help you eliminate that problem. <laughs> Women, that's an interesting <laughs> My name is Carl Schwartz. I'm a recent MBA graduate, uh, also looking for work. I'm going to be doing a little work for Kessie Development, uh, but still plenty of time for anybody else. Hi, I'm Linda Detterman. I'm a marketing director at an institute uh, in Chicago. Uh, I'm a Hello, my name is Amber Dietler. I do marketing and sales for VC Web Design. And I have a couple goals for you guys. Um, basically, we all know about social media, but my goal is to offer the services to you as well as teach you the services as well, too. So if you have any questions, please come to me, and I will be glad to help you. Hello, everyone. I'm Janice Milham. I have a company called Milham Images. I do business strategy for small to medium-sized businesses. Uh, my specialty is helping people define their brands through compelling images of, on their websites and on their marketing materials. I do have one announcement today. I'm working with the Ann Arbor um, Public Arts Commission, and we're launching a new campaign called Support Public Arts. So if you guys are really passionate about supporting your public arts program, um, I'll have a QR code here we're going to be posting around town. And this goes to their website. You can nominate your favorite work of art in town, which I hope that you all do. So if anybody wants to scan this now, it'd be great. Talk to you later. Is this really scannable? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Somebody will scan it. No, it, I know it's scannable, but would it be scannable on uh, video? We'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, go. Where's, that's enough. You only did one. All right. Second. I'm uh, Scott Ringline, president of Mobile Media Marketing. For those of you that want to reach your customers through this, come and see me. Also, if you guys have an event and you're looking at a way to generate leads, come and see me. We can set up an account so you can try it out for free and see how it works before you buy in. Scott Ringline, Mobile Media Marketing. Hi, I'm Mike Brooks. It looks like I'm last, so everybody can take a breath of relief. Uh, I'm with Inpour Technologies. We're a, business, a startup business based in Lansing, uh, and also some people down here in Ann Arbor. Uh, we're, we've developed a unique new material for flame retardancy in plastics. I don't imagine there's too many customers in the room, but uh, uh, I know along the way we're going to learn a lot from being at this event uh, about how to better market our products. Thanks. Hi, I'm 
Hi, I'm Curtis Sherlin from Cut Studios, a commercial editorial portrait photographer, which means I pretty much shoot everything, <laughs> studio, location, uh, events, except for weddings. Hi, I'm Kevin Gillespie. I'm CEO of InGenX and proud to be so. I have one little announcement. First of all, I do have a Blendtec blender and it works awesome. <laughs> Um, I got trapped at Costco though before the website. Um, I have been doing for the past uh, couple of years a, a talk show on WAM in Arbor 1600. Uh, and it was a home improvement show. And we sort of made a deal with them to now turn the show, evolve it into what my partner and I really want to do, which is a small business show. So we're, as of June 4th, we'll be doing a small business program at WAM Talk 1600. I'm looking for sponsors. And I'm also looking for business people who have compelling stories or advice or whatever that can be on the show and help the local community to grow and spread the kind of knowledge that we do here at LA2M uh, via radio, terrestrial radio. So thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks, Chad, for doing a great job. Let's hear from him again. It's 1 o'clock. We did a great job. We're all done. Hope to see you guys next week and have a great week until then. I will, uh, 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 I will, u